It's my pleasure to have you here uh, and welcome to Dr. Meta from uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm an Angelo Pirozzi, an oncology fellow from Humanitas University and currently visiting research fellow at Mayo Clinic Arizona working with Dr. Tanios Bekaisab. And it's a pleasure to have a guest so prestigious here. So, Thank you so much for having me. Okay, my pleasure. So I have a couple of questions about your experience with upper GI cancers. Especially in the last year, there was a new approval for a very important drug. It's called Zorbetuximab. And we know that this approval came from two important phase three trials, like the GLOW trial and the Spotlight trials, with different type of populations. But we know that there is a specific subgroup in the advanced setting of gastric and gastroesophageal junction cancer that can benefit from this target therapy. So betuximab, we know, is going to target a clothing 18.2, which is a new target in gastric cancer compared to the old HER2 positive. Could you please elaborate a little bit more about this new approval? And if you think that there might be also a coexistence and co-alteration with the HER2 positive gastric cancer. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And I think, yes, it's a, it's a very important time for upper GI cancers, I think. It's very exciting to see the approval of Zolbituximab. Um, just as a preface, what is Claudin 18.2? Because this is the very first time it's ever been introduced in oncology space. So Claudins are tight junction proteins that are typically found at the basal layer of cells. And during malignant transformation, these usually get onto the luminal layer which makes them a very important target for therapeutics. So Claudin 18.2 can typically be found in normal gastric cell lining, um, which is why you see some of the side effects that we do see from targeting Claudin 18.2. Um, but it's also routinely found in about 30 to 40 percent of cases of gastric cancers. Ooh. Now, the overlap with different biomarkers is anywhere between 10 to 15 percent. So if you look at Maybe um, with HER2 positive, it could be anywhere between maybe 15 to 20 percent. Um, with PDL1, it's again about 15 to 20 percent, I would say. Um, so that's kind of the important overlap that you should be aware of. The two important trials that led to the FDA approval of Zolbituximab, which is the first monoclonal antibody targeting Claudin 18.2, were both designed for patients that are HER2 negative. So these were tested to be HER2 negative. Um, these were not selected for PDL1 status, so we do not know, you know, what would be what would be the approach if we were tar to target PDL1 in that case. Um, but they were treated with so the spotlight study used the full Fox as the chemotherapy backbone, and the GLOW study used KPOX as the chemotherapy backbone. And both these studies independently showed improvement in progression-free survival, which was their primary endpoint, as well as overall survival, which has led to the FDA approval of this important drug. Uh, one thing to note is if you look at the overall response rate, which is something that we have been attuned to with all the immunotherapy trials, you don't see that much of a difference in overall response rate when comparing chemo versus chemo plus albutuximab. So again, keeping that in mind, if you have somebody with a heavy burden of disease and what you're looking for is disease debulking, that might not be the choice of treatment or that is not the expectation that one should be having with this therapeutic, therapeutic combination. Um, but there are also some challenges in administering the drug. So as I mentioned to you, these are found in normal gastric cell linings, which is why when we disrupt them with the Claudin 18.2 targeting agent, um, they cause a lot of gastritis, which thereby lead to nausea vomiting. Now, with this drug, the, the peak of nausea vomiting is the first two cycles, and they tend to get better as we move through the cycles. Um, the first two cycles for those reasons are also long treatment durations because you can do like a stop, start, stop, start approach if there is significant nausea vomiting. Um, have heavy antiemetics on board, make sure it's a it's going to be almost like a extremely highly emetogenic uh, class of therapeutics. So kind of treat appropriately per recommended guidelines. Um, but once the first two treatments are done, um, you, you probably can expect some improvement in that nausea vomiting, and hopefully the patient should get through safely. Okay, so much interesting. And did you notice also a relationship between efficacy and toxicity? Because, you know, in some types of cancer, like HCC, we know that in that case for immunotherapy and even for target therapy, even if we think about cetuximab in neck cancer, there is this correlation between the grade of toxicity experience. Of course, we can discuss about the type of toxicity, so not all types of toxicity are the same. 
and the efficacy outcome. Do you think for Zolbetuximab, did you experience something like that? There are data about that. So the idea is to manage toxicity, but not to stop the treatment. This is true even for Zolbetuximab. I would like to have your kind yeah. opinion. I think it has more to do with how it's disrupting your gastric wall lining. Uh, but it's not correlated with the response. I, I don't think so. That is what it, it's being noted to be. So I don't think so. there has been any correlation between toxicity and efficacy with Zolbituximab. I think it's just something that you need to get the patients through. Um, and then hopefully you will start to see some the benefit of the treatment. Okay, perfect. Thank you for your insight about the use of Zolbituximab. It's a new and uh, innovative target therapy for uh, gastric cancer. So thank you so much for that. And for having me. Thanks. Thank you.